Hello folks, this is Sula once again. You're listening to another video for League of Legends, this one featuring Karthus. This is taken from one of our Tuesday YouTube night custom game events, and in this game I'm going to be playing Karthus. Alongside me is Varus Knox playing as Ezreal, Speaker playing as Blitzcrank, Jukup Lee playing as Shivana, and Feroza playing as Olaf. And then on the other team we have Avalon playing as Ezreal, Bomb Diggity playing as Janna, Copper Dragon playing as Shivana, Falcon Beast playing as Victor, and Kinnikin playing as Malphites. We actually do have double Ezreals and double Shivanas in this particular game. And I don't know why this has appeared. We will see what's going on with that attempting to reconnect. Okay, it's gone now. Very strange since this is a replay. Anyway, I have been doing a lot of casts recently for IPL. I did four games this week, the first week that I got back from vacation. Maybe some of you had the chance to watch that live, so I wanted to take a break from some of those casts and do one of our custom games, do one of these post-production replay commentaries that people like. Uh-oh, I really hope that that doesn't keep coming back throughout the game. But uh, this game was one where... I think I was able to put on a pretty good demonstration of how to play Karthus, so we're going to keep an eye on that. I'll come back to that subject, but we are actually looking to invade because we have a Blitzcrank, speaker playing Blitz, so let's watch and see what happens, and uh-oh, we catch the team with their pants down, Bomb Diggity going to get grabbed right there, and that's going to be first blood for our Olaf player. Now the chase is on going after Malphite, can Kinnikin manage to get away from here? He has burned his flash, he's pretty low. And it looks like they are, in fact, going to be able to get out of here with no further troubles as the game continues to attempt to reconnect to something. I don't know. I'm just going to ignore that. Let's just pretend that that is not there since it keeps going away. But anyway, so that was a very successful level 1 invasion. Anytime that you have Blitzcrank on your team, you can look to invade the enemy. Blitzcrank is one of the strongest champions in a level 1. If the enemy team has Blitzcrank in turn, you have to be very careful about invading them invading you just because with that grab, he can enable you to win a level one fight very easily their team could have prevented that by having a champion right here watching this entrance or at least they could have been more aware of it but they didn't have anyone watching this jungle entrance they were able to walk in very easily and pick up first blood right there so in any case that was a successful invade and one minor other thing Feroza should have just recalled he should have just used his recall used his blue pill gone back to base and then run up the lane that way instead of walking all the way across the map he also would have had a chance to buy then so anyway i will run through the laning matches we have copper dragon playing a shivana so this is a laning shivana up in top against Barosa's olaf in mid i'm up against fucking beasts uh, victor right here and that is the full machine victor it's a pretty nice skin as well i don't think a lot of people have seen that one because not many people play victor in bottom lane varus and speaker are playing against bomb diggity and avalon Ezreal and Janna, Ezreal Blitz against Ezreal Janna, and then Jukup Lee is jungling Shivana for our team, and on the other team they have Kinnikin playing as Jungle Malphite, so that's the matchups. Now, I have done a ton of Karthus videos, he is one of my most played champs along with a whole bunch of supports, but no one has ever told me in the comments, I don't think I've ever seen someone say, do fewer Karthus videos, people seem to enjoy the videos with Karthus, so as long as that's the case, I will keep doing them, I will keep... Uh, going ahead and putting them up on the channel for people to enjoy. So I want to talk a little bit about sort of the theory of playing Karthus in this video. Varus actually and Speaker got themselves into some trouble here early on, but um, I want to talk a little bit about sort of the theory of how to play Karthus. He's a little bit different than some of the other mid-champions, as they get a very early blue donation from Jukup Lee because we were able to go and invade and steal their blue at level 1. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and just sort of cart this play in general and how to be most effective with this champion. I've done videos before where I talked about his skills quite a bit, but I'll run through them again here for you guys. So as far as uh, skilling Karthus, you do want to give priority to his Q, his Lay Waste. So I'll go ahead and highlight it for you here. Lay Waste, you can see the range of the skill right there. It has quite good range. Create the Delayed Blast at Karthus' cursor position after a half second deals magic damage to each nearby enemy. The key thing is, deals double damage if it hits only a single unit, and the cooldown is very short. The cooldown is less than one second, so this is a very spammable skill, and it's one of the reasons why I picked up Karthus in the first place, because he has sort of a very fast-paced style of gameplay. You don't have to worry about sort of really long cooldowns. He just, uh, you're using those Qs nonstop. So one of the things that you have to keep in mind when playing Karthus is his Q does deal double damage if it only hits one unit, whether that's an enemy champ, whether that's an enemy minion. So you want to be careful about where you play Place those lay waste because you normally want to try to get the double damage you want to try to hit only one target it's easier to farm minions that way 
Uh, it deals more damage to champions that way as well. Right there, I use the auto attack to get that one melee minion, but Karthus's auto is really bad. You usually are going to be using his Q to farm most of the time. You almost have to because his auto attack is so bad. Not too much else you can do. And of course, you can use it for harassing in lane, especially right now. I have a blue buff, so that means I will never run out of mana. I can just keep spamming these Qs over and over again, but watch how I'm placing them to get each minion one at a time. Now, I missed that one but I'm going to be able to clean up each one of these minions, and one lay waste picks up each one of them. So, more or less how that skill works there. Alright, now Karthus' next skill, the one I give second skilling priority, is his E, his Defile. This is a toggle on-off switch. The passive effect is that whenever you kill a unit with it, you get mana back. You'll actually see a little blue aura around me that triggers every time I kill a minion. Not the blue buff, but a little blue indicator appears when I kill a minion with it. Watch, you'll see... Just watch my champ, watch Karthus, and there it is right there. See the little blue uh, indicator around him? That's the passive effect of Defile right there. See it is? Get the mana back right there. So it's the passive effect from uh, running Defile. The toggle on switch is it deals magic damage in a circle around Karthus. Deals magic damage per second. It's very low initially, but it becomes much higher, of course, with more ability power and with more points in the skill. So I level this second, gives the highest damage output. You can alternately skill this last, and you can choose to skill up Karthus's wall instead. That's his third skill, his W. Wall of Pain creates a wall on target location, lasts for five seconds. Enemies that pass through it are slowed and have their armor and magic resistance reduced uh, over time. So uh, walls are really good skill. Biggest thing that separates a good Karthus player from a bad Karthus player is how effectively they can use the Wall of Pain. It is on a fairly long cooldown. Not ridiculously so, but longer than his other skills. But the basic idea is you trap people with the wall, it allows you to slow them, it allows you to chase them down, and it's great for zoning in team fights. So if sometimes you will see people level the wall second over the defile, but I generally just feel I generally feel that you can get most of the benefit from the wall with one point in the skill. But more points in it do get you a larger wall and increases the slow duration. So that's what that does. And then, of course, Karthus' uh, most famous skill, his ultimate Requiem. After channeling for three seconds, Karthus deals magic damage to all enemy champions, regardless of distance. Anywhere on the map, it does hit them. It's his signature skill. It's the skill that attracted me to Karthus in the first place. I thought that that seemed just like a really neat and interesting skill. So they have been hitting this with a nerf bait recently. The cooldown is now extremely long. It starts at 200 seconds. It does go down with more points in the skill, but it is a very long cooldown nonetheless. So you have to be more careful about how you use this right now. But of course, anytime that you think you can secure a kill with it, you still want to use that ultimate. Really useful in team fights. Finally, I haven't mentioned Karthus's passive. Most people who play League of Legends are familiar with this, but Karthus does have the ability to keep casting spells after he dies for seven seconds so opens up some interesting gameplay opportunities that aren't really there for other champions karthus's spells can't be interrupted so oftentimes in fights it's more useful to let yourself die first and only then use your ultimate not all the time but that's often a useful way to play him okay so those are sort of basics for karthus the basic build is rod of ages into death cap that's basically the standard way to build him followed up by Void Staff after that, and that's the build that I'm going to be using in this game. So that's a very standard AP build, nothing too spectacular there. And runes and uh, masteries are pretty standard for AP champions as well. I am using Magic Penetration Reds, Mono Regen per level Yellows, AP per level Blues, and Flat AP Quints. That's again pretty standard build for a lot of APs. Not everyone, but it's, it's pretty standard in terms of how people use runes on a lot of AP champs. Uh, alternately, you can swap out the some of those uh, the blue runes for uh, magic resist if you're in a lane where you need the magic resistance more than the extra killing power. And then masteries again, very standard for most AP champs. Twenty one zero nine is standard for almost every AP, not all of them, but just about all of them. And that's what I'm going to be using here. Okay, so those are basics for Karthus. Now for some a little bit more. Uh, maybe not necessarily more advanced, but certainly a little bit more complicated. One thing that you see me doing over and over again is coming and taking these wraiths. And that's really what you want to do with Karthus. There are some mids that you want to use to gank a lot. Karthus is not really one of them. Karthus is a champ that's more about farming up in mid. And uh, you don't necessarily need to roam around the map. Because with Karthus' ult, he can be in fights all over the map without having to move. He can just use his ultimate, and he can stay mid, and he can keep farming, and he'll still be able to affect events elsewhere on the map. I'm going to come over here and get another blue donation. Nicely timed from our jungle Shivana, Jukup Lee, because you can see I'm getting a little bit low on mana, so it's really well timed. 
The basic way to play Karthus is, although you can go around the map and gank, from what I've seen and from what I've seen the pro players do, the best thing to do is just to stay mid, keep shoving the lane, keep shoving your minion wave into the enemy tower, force them to last hit at tower, and then while the minion wave is pushed to tower, you go and you grab other minions on the map. Most notably, uh, Wraith Camp also can grab Wolf Camp at times as well. However, right here, before anything else happens, notice I took a little damage from Victor there. I'm coming down here. I'm going to grab this Wraith Camp once again. I wasn't keeping track of it, but I believe this is about the sixth or seventh time I've already taken this Wraith Camp, and that's really doing good things for my uh, last hitting for my minion count. I'm getting a lot of gold from that. Now I'm going to come back here. Notice I get back in time to farm the lane, but watch what's going to happen right here. Victor's going to flash. Malphite's going to flash. Victor ult into Malphite ult, and unfortunately... There's not a whole lot I can do about that. I actually did see Malphite coming. I was going to flash away, but Victor's silence caught me first. I went back and looked at this, actually, on the replay, and Victor's silence, his uh, ultimate is Chaos Storm, silences you. You can see here, deals magic damage per second, briefly silences enemies. Uh, the Victor player, Falcon Beast, he flashed and then used his ult on me. That silenced me, so I couldn't flash away. Then Kinnikin flashed and also ulted me. So two flashes burned. They were able to get the kill. Can't really criticize that, but uh, not really any way to get out of that either, unfortunately. One thing I could have done is, notice my ward was on the left side of the lane. One thing I could have done was I could have been playing more to the left side of the lane, and that would have made more distance for Malphite to get over towards me. Um, but with me taking the Wraith Camp so much, I've been over on the right side of the lane. So one thing I could have done that I noticed after this match was I could have um, put my ward down over here because I was spending so much time taking the Wraiths over and over again that I could potentially have put my wards on the bottom side of the lane instead of on the top side. I usually tend to prefer to ward top side, just sort of a personal preference, I guess. But um, with, like I said, with myself around Wraith Camp so much, it might have been a better place to put them. Now, so what does taking Wraith Camp over and over again do? Well, it gets you a lot more minion kills. Notice that I'm at 100 and, 108 minion kills. I'm going to go over 110 on this particular wave. Let's see, there we go. And let's grab these last two, and that'll take us to 113. So 113 in 1140, that is really quite good. Over 10 per minute, that's that's real, uh, very, very solid. Jukupli unfortunately gives that one away by advancing too far. So you can see on the scoreboard here, I'm at 113. Next closest is 83 on Copper Dragon, their Shivana player. So I'm pretty far out ahead of everyone else in the game. And that's with myself uh, getting killed right there. And again, that's because I'm getting most of the kills in most of the minion kills in lane, and then I'm taking that Wraith Camp over and over again as well. Now you might say, well, aren't you taking those away from your jungler? Yes, you are. But the the, the basic idea is, as long as those, uh, as long as the the minion camp is up and the jungler is not in the immediate area, you should feel free to take Wraiths as mid. See, like right now, Ju Cut Lee, he's down in bot. You know, he's running around down here. He's not in position to take this camp. So. Um, I want to make sure, to, I want to just grab it right away, and it'll probably respawn by the time he gets back up here. Uh, you want to just keep taking those camps, uh, keep taking the Wraith camp over and over and over again, um, while making sure that you're not losing out minions in mid. So again, what I do is I shove out the wave. So like right here, I've taken this wave. Notice how I've shoved this wave to the tower. Now I have, you know, maybe 10 seconds or so free where I can go do something in another lane. I'm going to take advantage of this time to go back because I can pick up a Rod of Ages. I want to get the stacking benefit. Um, but again, the reason why I recall there is because I've uh, freed up a little time for myself by shoving that minion wave into the enemy tower. Now Jukup Lee's doing the same thing. He's going to shove this wave. Now all these minions are going to hit the tower, and that's again going to deny them to Victor, the enemy team's uh, mid player. So again, that's sort of why we're doing that. And uh, I missed one wave, but Shivana got them, so it's not a big deal. And now I'm going to come back here. Once again, I'm going to grab this Wraith Camp. And by the time their minion wave um, gets off this tower, their minion wave will come back here. By the time that their minion wave comes here to mid, I'll have already grabbed Wraiths, and I'm back in the lane once again. Victor's pushing the lane. He's doing the, the same thing. He's trying to shove it into my tower so that I miss last hits. But... Um, I'm going to get here in time to clear the wave. Again, notice the Defile. This is my Defile Aura. That's the green aura around me. That's me running this Defile Aura. One of the reasons why Karthus is a really good farmer, is an excellent farmer. You can just turn on Defile for a couple seconds. A couple uh, Defile Aura and two or three Lay Waste will kill the entire minion wave. So you can just keep pushing the wave and then going to do neutral camps. And you can just farm, farm, farm so effectively. So watch, I should be able to get this whole camp as well. There we go. So I think I missed uh, one or two minions there. But I was able to get most of that wave. Toss down the ward so I have more vision. And right here, going to get in a little harass on Victor right there. Uh, he, he didn't get that lay waste. But I think I hit him with two of them there. 
he took a fair amount of damage. So right now, once again, what do we have? We've got about, you know, 10, 10 to 15 seconds free before uh, the next wave hits. So once again, going to come down here, grab the Wraith Camp. That's four more minions, 39 plus 12. That's 51 more gold. And let's see if we can get back up here in time to get this full wave. And yes, actually, I'm going to get back up here in time. Nope, I missed one minion. Oh, well. And uh, here I was actually using my ult into this fight in bot, but no, nope, not quite enough. Ezreal's going to survive with 100 HP, so not quite enough to be able to survive that. Also, notice that my ward reveals that Shivana's here and Victor's here as well. One of the problems in this game for us was their Shivana player was way it was uh, it was winning mid uh, top lane. Uh, 106 to 74 and has a kill up in top lane so uh, their Shivana player was doing very was doing a good job in top lane also has this tower down so that was allowing Copper Dragon their Shivana player to roam around the map a little bit anyway so once again there I go get blue buff a nice donation from our own jungle Shivana but once again notice the timing uh, I should have gotten that minion that's bad notice the timing once again uh, I go get blue after shoving lane I come back and I'm able to get to blue buff um, I'm able to get back to lane and not miss any minions. Now here, I thought that Jukup Lee was going to take this Wraith Camp. He walked right by it without taking it. So I was like, okay, if you're going to walk right by it, then I'll come ahead. You know, I'll go ahead and grab it. Over here, Feroza gets chased down. Is he going to make it out? Nope, that Ignite is going to pick up the kill. So he's going to be set a little bit further behind right there. Look like he got grabbed by Kinnikin and a Falcon Beast. So he got grabbed by two of them. However... There, um, we did notice that their own jungler Malphite, their jungle Malphite Kinnikin was up here. So we saw that while he was up there, we had a narrow opportunity to come in here and try to take this dragon because Malphite was elsewhere, their jungler. So we are in fact gonna slip in here, going to take that, get the passive gold for the team. And now watch right here, Falking Beast is coming down to push this tower, but he doesn't know Jukup Lee is there. So there's the wall to cut off his escape route. A nice Shivana ult right there. I'm gonna use my Ignite. And Defile is going to finish off that kill. I actually did get frozen in the little bubble that Victor puts down. I'm afraid I don't know the name of that skill. But it wasn't enough right there. And that was nicely played by our jungler, Jukup Lee. So I am going to pick that up. And once again, I would give these raids to the jungler. I would give them to our Shivana player. But Jukup Lee walked by and didn't take them. So I'm going to go ahead and take them in that case. So basically, any time that the raids are up and if you're the mid player, you want to take them. You want raids to die as soon as they respawn over and over and over again. They're a resource there for you to use, and you want to make sure that someone is getting that gold because they respawn in only 60 seconds. So just take them as soon as you can. So notice 181 minion kills, and we're not quite at the 17 minute mark yet. So I've got Rod of Ages, now I'm gonna grab Sorcerer's Shoes, I'm gonna grab a Blasting Rod, a Ward, and two Health Bots, and that is a very solid buy. So now I've gotten a lot of my key items in place already. I've gotten my Rod of Ages, I've already gotten, let's see, how many stacks? I think I've gotten, what, what is this? Four stacks so far, gotten four stacks on the Rod. I've gotten my Sorcerer's Shoes, so I have a lot of magic penetration right here. Let's see, 29 flat and then another 10%. So the 29 spell pen will cut through that 30 base MR that most champs have. So you notice that Victor has 30 base MR, and I'm able to cut through that. Look how much damage he takes. That's two lay waste, and it's half his health. So again, that's me having 173 ability power, having that uh, spell penetration, and then hitting on the lay waste where they deal double damage. So let's see, it's 170... And then times two. So yeah, it's 340, 340. So yeah, he lost about 700 health. With him only having 30 magic resist, he's taking basically true damage because I have 29 spell penetration right now. So again, want to get those Sork Shoes early on. And now right here, Falcon Beast comes forward. He gets trapped by the wall. There's one Lay Waste. There's two Lay Waste. And there's three Lay Waste. And I was able to pick off that kill. So that, I think, was rather well done. Those lay waste placements were pretty good. Again, one of the things that just comes with practice as Karthus is lay, getting those lay waste in the right spots. I don't always get them in the right spot, but that time I did. And actually, I didn't even have to use ult. Ult was still sitting there. So that was, uh, that was pretty well done. I'd like to think. Uh, Falcon Beast, just a little bit too far forward, unfortunately. Notice he also only has Boots 1, I have Boots 2. That doesn't make a huge difference, but it did help me chase him down right there. Once again, going to grab another wave, and notice that I'm going to hit 200 minion kills at uh, about the 19 minute mark. Now right here, I come forward, I push the tower, I'm free to push the tower because I had just gotten the kill in mid. I knew that Shivana would come down from top. There she is on the ward, so I make sure to back and get out of there in time before Shivana catches up to me. And now that I've got time, before the minion wave pushes, once again, 
go take rates, as I've said. I, I really should have maybe done like a counter on how many times I took rates in this game because it was a lot, is all I can say, just about every time that they spawn. Here, I'm trying to farm this wave. Copper Dragons come down. Now, one thing about Shivana is with her burnout, you can kind of farm minion waves in a similar fashion to Karthus's Defile. Similar idea. So, Shivana is actually very easy to farm with as well. Don't see Shivana lane that often, but of course it is. You can do it, and I have seen it in tournament play some. Overall, this game's pretty even right now. It's 7 to 6 in kills. In terms of farm, our team is, uh, I mean, I'm way out in front in farm, but other than that, their team's keeping up quite well. Right here, Copper Dragon's about to jump on me. I have to flash out of that, because if I get Victor ulted, I will die right away. So I just flashed before I could get ulted by Victor. Not, uh, not a flash I wanted to use, but didn't really have much of a choice there. As soon as Copper Dragon Shivana jumped out, I pretty much had no choice, but uh, just had to run out, just had to flash out of there. Over here, I wanted to come do wraiths. I see that Victor's in the area. He's trying to take my wraiths, and he does take the only wraith that's really worth anything, which is the big wraith. The little two, the little ones aren't worth really anything. So that was a nice little invasion there. If I'd been perhaps a little bit faster, we might have been able to trap him. Notice that we see Shivana right there. So again, this ward really doing work. It's spotted quite a few enemies in the area. And it's also going to give us warning that they're looking to go and try to steal our blue. We know that their team is looking to do that. So we need to stall until Shivana can get up here, until Drew Cup Lee can be in the area. Again, I see that they're coming in trying to invade. So there is the wall. Now I'm going to miss on that lay waste. And I miss on the second one too. So that placement was pretty bad. Copper Dragon does have 100 MR. So they wouldn't do that much damage. There's the Victor ult. We do force that out. It's a little bit of a wasted Victor ult right there doesn't really do that much so they wanted to deny that blue buff to me but we were able to react quickly enough to prevent them from going and taking that blue so it looks like we have managed to hold on to our blue and that their team has been forced to retreat see uh copper dragon has to go back to top lane notice all these minions pushing top if he doesn't go back to top he's going to miss out on a big wave and he wants to make sure he gets the golden experience for grabbing them so once that once that wave starts to push the tower he doesn't have too much of a choice if he sticks around, he's going to lose out on a lot of golden experience, and he doesn't want to do that, so that's why he goes back to top. All right, anyway, I did get that blue buff, so that helps quite a bit, as I said. So once again, it's time to farm up this wave in mid, and there's going to be another wave right behind it, so I need to make sure I get both of those. There's Defile. Here comes another wave. Um, again, I would go down here and get the wool, the uh, Wraith Camp, but Feroza's down here, and that was one thing that was a little little surprising that Olaf was down here um, at the Wraith Camp a couple times. It's not a big deal, but you just usually don't see that. And again, I think that was a reflection of the fact that he was uh, a little bit behind in this top lane, 116 to 182 and 2-0 Shivana. So he was not in the greatest position up there in that top lane, and he was coming down here to try to get a little bit extra farm. As far as bottom lane goes, Varus and Speaker are doing pretty good. Varus has 4 kills, 143 minion kills, to 3-2 on Avalon, the other Ezreal player, 134. So to this point in time, it was fairly even up to this point in time, say through the first 20 minutes or so. Now dragons respawn, so we, it looks like it's going to be another dragon fight. We can see they don't have any wards here because Shivana does have the oracle. I toss down the wall. The wall does grant vision, so we can see nobody coming in that way. But here comes Janna. Bomb Diggity comes in. We actually do pick up a kill in bottom lane. There we are. We are going to get that dragon. Although Malphite ult and Victor ult are going to finish off our own Shivana. But now they've used all, pretty much all their ults. I'm going to be able to catch Falcon Beast in a great wall. Speaker's going to hit the grab. Now here comes Copper Dragon. But this is a four on. Uh, it's like a four on two here. Now Janna getting into the fight as well. That ignite. Not going to be enough, but we are going to get the kill with Varus's uh, Ezreal. And, and Varus does have red buff here, and that's really scary. You do not want to see you do not want to see um, Ezreal with red buff because he can just chase down pretty much anything. So Varus scores the triple kill. We went four for one there. Again, they blew up uh, Shravana immediately, but the problem was they used Victor Alt and Malphite Alt to get that kill. And once they used them, they had kind of used up most of their stuff. Now, with four members of their team dead, including their jungler, we did get their jungler, right? Yeah, we did get their jungler. So we decided, let's make a play and go straight for this Baron. So this is very risky, but we do have Shivana rushing in. And we were pretty sure that they didn't have any wards here. This is still very, very risky. But their team is dealing with a minion push in mid. And we figured, you know, if we all put our damage on this, we probably can get this before they get here. Speaker's been tanking it. He's almost dead. I'm almost dead here as well. I'm also almost out of mana. But we've got this down to just 800 HP. And there it goes going to get that smite so yes the 23 minute baron sneaking that in at the end of that fight and the enemy team just uh didn't have a ward and it looks like they were not on top of it looks like we caught them 
really unaware of that one. So what was a close game, really was a close game, now has snowballed pretty heavily in our favor with that four for one dragon, four for one dragon and baron. That is a lot of gold. So I was actually on 3,200 gold right there. I finished death cap. I grabbed an amplifying tome and started on the work towards Void Staff. So right now, I mean, 24 minute mark and I've got 450 AP. So I'm just gonna be dealing enormous amounts of damage with uh, with all of, really all of my skills. But I mean, the Lay Waste, if I can catch anyone, if I catch one person with it, it'll deal 500 damage. I mean, before, obviously magic resistance will reduce that somewhat, but uh, 500 damage potentially from a single Lay Waste. Uh, Defile, dealing 220 magic damage per second. And then the ultimate deals uh, almost 800 damage. So anyway, we're looking to group up. We uh, we have this ward here at their blue. I'm not sure who placed this, but this is a really good ward. So we're looking to make a play here in bottom lane. We have all, all of us down here. I see Kinnikin sweeping around. I'm going to try to come in behind their team. going to try to wall them off. Avalon is trying to get out of here, which is a good decision. He is going to try to uh, blink out of here. So the wall is going to cut off Kinnikin's avenue of retreat right there. Then Speaker hits on the grab. The knockup right there. Varus picks up the kill. I do think that that wall could have been better. It did cut off the avenue of retreat for Kinnikin, their Malphite player. But I think it could have been better place to get more than one member of their team. Still, we did pick off one. Uh, we did pick off their jungler. So we're, right now we're going to be able to force a fight 5v4 with Baron. And I'm going to grab this blue to make sure I don't run out of mana. So again, we're going to try to force a fight at this tower. This is only a secondary tower, not a nexus tower. So this is a good place for us to try to fight. And we just need to get an initiation. So looking to go in. And I see a bunch of them grouped. I'm like, all right, I'm going to toss down the wall to split them up. I'm going to flash in. And then I'm just going to start running my defile. Down here, Copper Dragon's tanking. But he's taking a lot of damage. I'm going to go after Janna. going to go after Ezreal right here. Victor gets caught back behind the rest of our team. They're all quite low. So now it's time to channel that Karthus ult and triple kill. Yes, the, I the Ion Cannon is on target. So yes, triple kill from the Karthus ult. Yes, that is dealing quite a bit of damage, 800 damage. And I honestly was not expecting to get three kills out of that. In that fight, I, I thought I was going to die because I just kind of ran into the middle of their team. I used my flash, flash forward into the middle of their team after tossing down the wall. I was expecting that they would focus me and kill me, but that we'd get a lot of damage. Oh, and right here, Speaker lands a perfect grab. And then one of my lay waste is going to grab the kill, but uh, a really nice hook there from Speaker. Anyway, in the team fight, I thought that I was going to die. Like I said, flashed forward, had the wall down, just ran in with the file, started tossing down lay waste, but uh, I managed to survive that okay because they apparently didn't focus me. And then uh, the result of the uh, result of killing all those wraiths over and over again earlier in the game is all that gold allows you to get farmed up. And what that means is that you get a lot of ability power, so your ultimate deals huge and huge, huge amounts of damage. So, so yes, thank you, Wraith Camp. Thank you for giving me the gold I needed to buy all those items. Anyway, this tower is super duper low. It's only on 85 HP, but we're not quite going to be able to pick this one up. We're going to have to retreat and back out of here. They're still chasing after me, but again, they really can't do that much. We do still have most of our team in the area four members of their team right there. So let's just grab a few more minion kills right here since we're in the area and still at 10 per minute, even though we have been team fighting and not farming. So yeah, two, 273, 27 minutes. That's that's pretty good. Uh, not, I mean, not, not intending to sound uh, too full myself, but that is very, very good in League of Legends. So one of the reasons why I was happy with this game. Anyway, right now I was going to go back to base. I saw another wave was right here. I was like, oh, you know, I've got 2,000 gold, but it would be nice to push one more wave and grab this gold. And now Varus was going back to base. Varus was on his way back to base, and Varus was... Uh, well, actually, I thought he was going back to base here, if I remember this. Anyway, our minion wave goes up to the tower. 76, 43, 11. Oh, 11 on that tower. No. So I decided, you know what? Let's go get that tower not going to stop me. One auto attack gets it, but now the Janna slow coming out. Ezreal auto attacking. Uh, just like, oh, I'm going to make it out. No! Flash Malphite ult. No, not going to make it out. So they are going to pick up that particular kill. And yes, that was a bit silly. Uh, again, one of the reasons why I did that, Varus said that he needed that tower to finish his last whisper. So did go back to get that. Would not normally have gone back to get that kill. But hey, Varus did need to get his last whisper. He needed that extra 150 gold. In a closer game, I would not have done that, but I mean, we're, we're pretty well out in front in this game. So anyway, with all the gold I'm sitting on, I finished Void Staff, 
Ability Power, Magic Penetration. And again, this is the standard card this build. Sork Shoes, Rod of Ages, Death Cap, Void Staff. And then from there, it's just situational. But So I've just grabbed a Blasting Wand. I can turn that into a number of different items from here. So whatever, we'll see what that turned into. I was thinking for this team, because they have Victor, Malphite, and Shivana, all of who deal mostly magic damage. Yes, Shivana and Malphite, both mostly magic damage, despite what you might think. Because they dealt so much magic damage, I was thinking I might go Abyssal Scepter with that last item, because, you know, extra magic resistance. No one on the team has Abyssal Scepter ability. Gives that aura. Would be nice. So anyway, I have a lot of spell penetration here. 29 flat and then 46%. And Abyssal would give me a little bit more magic penetration on top of that. So anyway, we'll see. Also did buy a blue pot and Elixir of Brilliance. So 583 ability power. That means the ult deals 900 damage before MR. And similar stuff for the rest of the skills. Now, Speaker gets a great grab. Um, but he's initiating actually a 3v5 fight. So I was like, no, don't fight, guys. Don't fight until I get here. And so... Indeed, we chose to wait, so. Uh, we did force a flash out of Victor, though. Uh, Falcon Beast, I don't think, realized that it was a 3v5, or a 5v3 in their favor. Now we see Copper Dragon, <coughs> excuse me, clearing a minion wave up here, so this is a bad place for Shivana to be. Use the wall to cut off the avenue of escape, and then the rest of the team's going to run in. Slowed from the wall, knock up by Blitzcrank right there. I ended up tanking the tower. Not really the one we wanted tanking that, but it's okay. So we're going to grab that tower, and right there, Speaker's going to hit on an amazing pull. Knock Falcon Beast up into the air. Really well done. Malphite ult coming out from Kinnikin. We were thinking to go back and grab Baron, but as it turns out, didn't really need to do so right there. That Ezreal ult's going to pick off one kill. Now I'm going to use Karthus ult, and that's going to pick up a second kill on Avalon, the Ezreal player. And at this point, it was like, well, we don't really need to go back for Baron, which was is about to respawn like any second now. Uh, we can probably just finish off this game because Janna's the only one still alive, and let's be honest, Janna doesn't really do that much damage. So GG's coming out, and at this point it's just mostly about pushing the minions into the base and trying to finish this one off. Uh, I'm coming down here to try and grab this particular minion wave. Now I see Bomb Diggity right here, and I'm like, let's try to get this kill. Ignite, wall, Janna ult. Oh no, tower shots, and yes, yes! Survive with 15 HP, and I actually got the kill via Ignite right there, as everyone else piled on the damage. So Speaker's gonna miss on that pull, but we are gonna finish this one off, or I believe that we're gonna finish this one off. Jewel Cup Lee is very low. Is he going to survive? No! Falls into the fountain at the last second. But we are going to wrap this one up, so... There we go, the very fast victory screen right now, since they changed that in the latest patch. Anyway, let's go to the finishing screen and a few final thoughts. Okay, well, as I said before, I hope people don't mind seeing too much more Karthus footage. I think most people enjoy seeing Karthus as a champion. The, the reason why I wanted to use this one was I just thought it was a great example of how to play Karthus, the style of playing Karthus that is staying in mid and just farming, 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 farming relentlessly. You can see on this screen here the 296 minion kills, just sort of short of 300 and almost 14,000 gold right up there with Varus Nox, even though he had a couple more champion kills there. So again, really the style of playing Karthus, taking those Wraith camps, just getting every minion in lane or as close to it as you possibly can, and then just getting super farmed up so that later on in the game, when you turn on your Defile and you use your ultimate, you just deal so, so much damage. You can just start wrecking people in the team fights. If you look on the enemy team, they really didn't have very much magic resistance. Shivana and Malphite were pretty much it, so all of their carries, Ezreal and Victor, just melt like butter with all of the damage that I was dealing there. Anyway, kudos around to the rest of the team. Varus Nox and Speaker had a nice lane in bottom. Varus got the 13 kills. Speaker had some really impressive pulls, and we had some nice play at times from Feroza and Jukup Lee as well in jungle and in top lane. Kudos around to everybody on the enemy team as well. I hope that they had a good time in this game. Hope that they had fun playing this one. So again, like I said, the whole idea of this one was just to demonstrate how to play Karthus. That's why I talked a little bit more about build order and a little bit more about skilling him than I do in a lot of other videos. I'm just trying to do this one with the assumption that you don't have any idea how to play Karthus and that if you're seeing this for the first time, you can get an idea more or less of what his gameplay style is like. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks to everybody who's been supporting me with the IPL cast. I definitely made some mistakes this week, but hopefully I'll be able to fix some of them in the future. I do appreciate the feedback that you guys are giving me. Anyway, until next time, have a great weekend, guys. See you again soon.